Do you know that there is only one God in three eternal persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? Do you know that Jesus said he is the only way to heaven, and his death and resurrection bring forgiveness of sins to all who believe? Welcome to the Pastor Study, a ministry of pastorstudy.org. Join us now as we study God's Word, the Bible, together. Welcome to the Pastor Study. Well, Thanksgiving is near, and I thought for this program we would meditate on thanking God for three things. Thank Him for the past, thank Him for the present, and thank Him for what He's going to do in the future. When I was a little boy, Dad was Catholic and went by himself to Catholic Church every Sunday. Mom took us kids with her to Lutheran Church every Sunday. But on a rare occasion, Dad would take me to the Catholic Church, and I remember what the Catholics would say before they took Holy Communion. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. That's Christianity in a nutshell. We thank God for what he did in the past, he died, what he's doing in the present, he's risen, and number three, what he's gonna do someday at the second coming of Christ. So let's just take some time and thank God on this program, and hopefully that'll fuel our Thanksgiving. Let's pray first. Father, we pray for Thanksgiving that's coming up that it won't be just a normal day where all we do is eat turkey and see people, but we'll actually put you, God, in the middle of our Thanksgiving. And Lord, just help us now in this uh, half hour to be thankful and speak to us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, number one, let's thank God for the past. Christ has died, past tense. That is what is called justification. The Apostle Paul took the phrase justification from the Roman law court. To be justified means to be declared not guilty, to be declared righteous. In other words, we're all sinners, we're all guilty, but because of Christ's death, his payment for our sins, God now declares us not guilty. God declares us righteous on account of what Christ did for us. When Jesus died on the cross, he said, it is finished. So hallelujah, our salvation is past tense. It's a done deal. It's over with. It's secure. There was a little girl in India and a poisonous snake sunk its fangs into her skin. Her brother saw this, ran over and started sucking the, the blood out of his little sister. But he had an open sore in his mouth. The poison went into him, killed the brother but save the sister. And when we say Christ has died, what we mean by that is, I'm a sinner before God, I deserve punishment, wrath, poison, I deserve God's holy righteousness against my sin. Jesus slips in between the wrath of God and me, Jesus takes the wrath of God, he sucks the poison, he pays for our penalty that we deserve to pay before God so we can be forgiven. Christ has died. I did a radio show last week and the, the listener said, you know, I'm a Christian, but I am haunted by sins I committed in my past. What do I do about this? And I said to him, Old Testament verse, as far as the east is from the west, so far does God remove our sins from us. And I said to him, I can be kind of a guilt-ridden guy too, but I shared with him what I've shared before, a sermon that changed my life when I was 20 years old. The preacher said, every time you sin, immediately do three things. Number one, immediately confess it. God, I sinned. Number two, immediately put it under the blood. God, I believe Jesus paid for this sin. And then number three, immediately forget about it. God's forgiven you, forgive yourself, and move on. It is said that 500 years ago when Martin Luther was around that the devil would come to Luther and, and remind him of his sins. And Luther would say, well, Satan, let me take you to the cross and there behold the Lamb of God who has paid for all my salvation. Uh, here's a quote from Luther. So when the devil throws your sins in your face and declares that you deserve death and hell, tell him this, I admit that I deserve death and hell. What of it? 
For I know one who has suffered and made satisfaction on my behalf. His name is Jesus Christ, Son of God. And where he is there, I shall also be someday. <laughs> and I love this quote of Luther. Listen to this. When I look at myself, I don't see how I can be saved. But when I look at Christ, I don't see how I can be lost. I love that. I'm going to repeat that. When I look at myself, I don't see how I can be saved. But when I look at Christ, I don't see how I can be lost. That's because Christ has died. He's provided our salvation. So trust him that he's going to forgive your sins and take you to heaven someday. Next, we thank God for the past. Christ has died. Let's thank God for the present. Christ is, present tense, risen. If you go to Moscow in Red Square, you will see a crystal casket with the embalmed remains of Lenin, founder of the Communist Party. It's a see-through casket. You can still see Lenin in, in, uh, in Red Square. And on his tomb it says, He, Lenin, was the greatest leader of all peoples, of all countries, of all times. He was the lord of a new humanity. He, Lenin, was the savior of the world. <laughs> But notice all the tenses of those verbs. Lenin was, was, was. Jesus is risen. In India, there was a parade going down the street and a big commotion and people bowing down. And they had discovered what they thought was a bone of Buddha. And a missionary was in the crowd and he said to his friends, see, that's the difference between their religions and ours. If we found a bone of Jesus Christ, we would weep. <laughs> Christ is, present tense, risen. We praise God for that. I mean, have you ever thought of what the world would be like if Jesus never rose from the dead? There'd be no Easter, no celebrations. There'd be no church. You couldn't sing a song like, I know that my Redeemer lives. You go to a funeral, there'd be no hope. So we remember, God, to thank you that, present tense, Jesus is risen, which means... He's here to get you through whatever you're going through right now. Praise God for that. <laughs> what, a, what would it be like if he wasn't? We thank you, God, for our past. Christ has died. Our present Christ is risen, that we have a Savior to get us through life. Third thing we thank God for is the future. Christ will come again. The Bible teaches that on the last day we'll hear trumpets and Jesus comes down in the clouds. All the dead are raised. You stand before Jesus Christ and he judges you. He determines whether you go to heaven or hell. Then the earth melts with fire and we go to the new heaven. <laughs> that is going to be a wonderful day. Um, and lately, given all the pandemic and people dying and the strange weather and fires and with people, um, uh, you know, with all the social unrest and political division. I've been hearing more than normal lately. Do you think we're in the end times? Well, uh, you know, back in the Middle Ages, millions of people died of the Black Plague and Christians thought we're in the end. They weren't. Back in World War II, Hitler being evil, killing six million Jews, all the people dying in World War II, there were Christians who thought, Hitler's the Antichrist, we're living in the end times. Well, and, and are we living in the end times today with all the strange stuff going on? I don't know that I can say yes, but I can say this, I hope we are. <laughs> I want Jesus to come back and set things right. You know, uh, some time ago, I was asked to come speak at a pro-life dinner. And it was kind of a depressing night because a, an election was held. A lot of pro-abortion candidates won, and it did not look good for the pro-life cause. So what I said that night is this. <laughs> One day, Planned Parenthood and the abortionists will not win. One day, the very slanted, biased press will not win. Uh, you know, one day the pornographers will not win. Uh, one, one day the uh, uh, Supreme Court won't win. But I said that night, but one day the Supreme Supreme Court is going to win. And we look forward to that day when Jesus returns in the clouds, sets this world aright, and takes us to our heavenly home. So let's sum this up. 
Thanksgiving is coming. And I want you to meditate that this year, God, we want to thank you for the past. Thank you that Christ has died. My sins are forgiven. I'm secure in him. Thank you, God, for the present. Christ is risen. I've got somebody to get me through this life. And then thank God for the future. Thank you, God, someday Jesus is coming back. He's going to have the second coming, raising the dead, judging the world, and taking those who trust him to heaven. Finally, he's going to make everything that's wrong right. <laughs> now, one more point before we end the sermon here. I just want you, to, want you to do this. Put God in your thanksgiving. You do remember that's why the pilgrims founded Thanksgiving, was to thank God. And so it's for so many people, Thanksgiving is a turkey and seeing their friends or family. No, let's put God back into Thanksgiving. And here's what I mean. Would you consider this? Before you have your meal, just say, well, you know, it's Thanksgiving. Could we go around the table and could everybody share one thing you're thankful for? And then have somebody offer a real prayer. I mean, I, I grew up in a family where we prayed every, every time we ate, but here's what we did. Come Lord Jesus, be our guest, and let these guests to us be blessed. Amen. It was like a nursery rhyme. I only heard somebody give a real prayer in my family once a year, and that was Grandpa at Thanksgiving. So I want to encourage you, put God into your Thanksgiving. Somehow have a real prayer, a real time of sharing where we praise God for the past, the present, and the future. Well, I want to close by singing a song here. And we've talked about our glorious future coming up because of Christ. This song is from the 1980s. And back then, a lot of people thought the second coming was around the corner. There was a book, 88 Reasons that rapture has to happen in 1988, <laughs> and it didn't. So I'm going to sing this song from the 1980s. When this song was written, the Reverend Moon, who claimed to be the second coming of Christ, was still alive. He's long dead now, and he didn't come back from the dead, by the way. But I just want to look forward to the second coming and the end of time and listen to the words. Well, old Buddha was a man and I'm sure that he meant well. But I pray for his disciples, lest they end up in hell. And I'm sure that old Muhammad thought he knew the way. But it won't be Hare Krishna we stand before on Judgment Day. No, it won't be old Buddha that's a-sitting on the throne. And it won't be old Muhammad that's calling us home. And it won't be Hare Krishna that plays that trumpet tune. And we're going to see the sun, not Reverend Moon. Well, I don't hate anybody, so please don't take me wrong. But there really is a message to this simple song. You see, there's only one way, Jesus, if eternal life is your goal. And meditation of the mind, it won't save your soul. Cause it won't be old Buddha who's a sitting on the throne. And it won't be old Muhammad that's calling us home. And it won't be Hare Krishna that sings that temper tune. And we're going to see the sun, not Reverend Moon. Well, you can be a Baptist and not be born again. A Presbyterian or a Methodist and still die in your sin. You can even be charismatic, shout and dance and leap a pew. But if you hate your brother, you won't be one of the chosen few. Cause it won't be a Baptist who's a sitting on the throne. A Presbyterian or a Methodist who's calling us home. And it won't be a charismatic that plays that trumpet tune. 
So let's all just live for Jesus, cause he's coming back real soon. No, it won't be old Buddha that's a sitting on the throne. And it won't be old Mohammed that's calling us home. And it won't be Hare Krishna that plays that trumpet tune. And we're going to see the sun, not a reverend moon. Praise God that day's coming. Amen. Welcome to the portion of the pastor study where we ask Pastor Brock questions regarding the Bible. Pastor Brock, is there anything in the Bible about observing a day for Thanksgiving? No, that's kind of an American tradition that comes from the pilgrims and eventually made it, became a national proclamation, I think, in the 1800s. But is there a, a Bible verse that says you have to take one day a, a year to, to thank God? No. Does that mean we shouldn't do it? No. I mean, the Jews had festivals mm -hmm. where they would uh, come and gather and praise God. So the Jewish Old Testament had festivals. And so, uh, you know, sometimes you, you meet some hyper-literal Christians who, well, the Bible doesn't say we're supposed to celebrate birthdays, so I'm not celebrating birthdays. Well, actually, look at the book of Job. They're celebrating a birthday in the book of Job at the beginning. But anyway, or, you know, we don't, we don't use instruments in the church because the, the New Testament doesn't have pipe organs. Mm -hmm. Well, New Testament doesn't have light bulbs either, but mm -hmm. they're using light bulbs in their church. Mm -hmm. Just because something isn't in the Bible doesn't mean you can't use it. Now, if something's unbiblical, you throw it out. But if it's neuter or neutral, mm -hmm. uh, I, I, think, I think we should observe Thanksgiving and use it as a time to get people's attention on the Lord. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. This is a three-parter. Should we say that we are saved now? Wouldn't it be more accurate to say that we will be saved someday? We are not saved already, are we? We are saved already, and I get this from 1 John 5, 13. I write this to you who believe in the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have, present tense, eternal life. So as a Christian, eternal life is not something I'm going to get after I die. I've already got it. Mm -hmm. But I, I'm going to explain the past, present, and future of salvation. I, th I think this will really help, so concentrate. Past tense, I was saved. That's talking about justification. Mm -hmm. When Jesus died on the cross to pay for my sins, God declared me not guilty on the basis of Christ's death. I was saved, it's a done deal. Then there's, I was saved from the penalty, the penalty of sin. Then there's present tense, I am being saved. That's called the process of sanctification by which the Holy Spirit cleans up my life. It's a process, it goes up and down, but I'm being presently saved from the power of sin. And then one day it's called glorification and that's when Christ returns and takes us home, we'll be saved from the very presence of sin. We won't even sin mm -hmm. anymore. So again, let me, I was saved. That talks about the cross, justification, I'm saved. I'm and from the penalty of sin. Present tense, I'm being saved from the power of sin by the sanctification of the Holy Spirit. Future tense, one day at the end of time, glorification when all believers will be saved from the very presence of sin. So there is a past, present, and future even to our salvation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Interesting. What are some things the Bible prophesies will happen in the last days? Well, uh, for instance, I'm just going to give you one. Okay. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, Paul says, I don't want you to be quickly shaken from your composure because people are disturbing them. And, uh, l let no one say to deceive you, saying that the second coming has already happened. Let no one in any way deceive you, for it, the day of the Lord, will not come until the apostasy comes first. That means falling away from the faith. And the man of lawlessness is revealed. That's the, the Antichrist. Mm -hmm. So like, there will be a falling away from the faith, and there will be the Antichrist who will come and deceive many. Now, let me pontificate for just a minute. The apostasy of the church is here. Mm -hmm. It's already here. I'm going to give you, uh, you and I were, were Lutherans, and we're still, I'm a still a Lutheran, but I'm not the radical branch called the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. You've got to hear this. I've shared on the show how Nadia Bowles Weber, this radical pastor who divorced her husband and has now publicly talked about how, how electrifying sex is with her new boyfriend, she's not married to this guy. Mm. She's still a pastor. She's a popular speaker in the ELCA. She, I'm not making this up. 
the purity ring movement, you remember that mm -hmm. when girls would wear yep, purity ring. rings to say, I want to be a virgin when I'm married? Mm -hmm. She had women from around the country send in those purity rings, which are so shaming and damning to young women. She melted them into a vagina sculpture and gave it to Gloria Steinem at a gathering to thank Gloria for her fine work. Now, I tell, now I've shared that before, but this is new. The ELCA recently installed Nadia Bowles Weber as their pastor for public witness. Hmm. This lady who fornicates and is not ashamed of it, who got in front of 31,000 teenagers at the Lutheran convention and had them repeat after me, I, I renounce the lie that queerness is anything other than beauty. They make her the pastor. I mean, you can't make this stuff up. And, and it says here in 2 Thessalonians 2 that the apostasy has to come first, mm -hmm. the falling away from the faith. Mm -hmm. It's here. And it's just not the ELCA Lutherans. It's the PCUSA Presbyterians. It's the United Church of Christ, the United Methodists, the Episcopal Church. I mean, I, if you would have told me, Mona, when I was a little boy, that the Lutheran church I was raised in was going to be ordaining practicing homosexuals, mm -hmm. marrying two women. ELCA just installed their first lesbian bishop with mm -hmm. a wife and two children. I mean, this is, I'll say it again, this ain't my grandma's Lutheran church. And this is unbelievable. Mm -hmm. I mean, the church has been messed up through the years. It's never been messed up like it is now. Um, so I, I, I one last one. <laughs> this is a recent one. Uh, go to my website, pastorstudy.org, and hit the F button, which stands for Facebook. You'll see all these articles that I write about this. But a recent one, a Lutheran pastor, a woman, uh, binary, uh, bisexual pastor, she went to the gay pride parade topless. And on her website, she's a pastor in a church, she put her topless picture there for everyone to see and she says, well, if, you, if, you're, if, if you're offended by this, you're sexualizing me and the problem is you, not her. Mm -hmm. Now, are they gonna discipline her? No, there's a church, go to herchurch.org. It's an ELCA church in San Francisco where they worship the goddess. This mm -hmm. is a feminist uh, congregation. It, it's paganism. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, they, she had her, her women make a little statue of Asherah so they could worship the forbidden divine feminine. And ha is the ELCA disciplining her? Mm -hmm. No. In fact, the bishop says, well, uh, we, she does push the envelope, but people hear good Lutheran preaching when they go there. Good Lutheran preaching? Martin Luther would scream. Mm. So one thing that happens before the end of time is called the falling away, the apostasy. Mm -hmm. It's here. It blows my mind how they can disregard the Bible. Yeah. Never in the history of the church has the church affirmed homosexuality, lesbianism, transsexuality. Mm -hmm. uh, we've always affirmed Jesus is the only way of salvation, not the ELCA and these liberal churches. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's tragic what hap has happened. So maybe we're nearing the end. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. it just gets worse, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it does. What is the apostasy that will happen in the last days? Oh, that's what we just talked about. Okay. I'm sorry. But you know what? One thing, I, the Reformed Church of America, the Calvinists, mm -hmm. I mean, the Episco uh, these churches I mentioned, they all have gone the gay route, marrying mm -hmm. homosexuals, practicing homosexual pastors. They're all shrinking and dying. People want a church that believes in something. Amen. These liberal churches are dying. So what did the Reformed Church in America do, which hasn't gone the gay route? They just voted to go the gay route. And I'm thinking, mm -hmm. Have you seen the fruit of this? Mm -hmm. So the Reformed Church in America now is, is caving. It's just tragic. Find yourself a good Bible-believing church, and uh, uh, the Missouri Synod of Lutherans are good. The uh, um, Free Lutherans are good. The, uh, the, the Baptists tend to be pretty good, although the American Baptists can be quite liberal, but you know, Southern Baptists and most Baptists are good evangelical churches, but Make sure you're in a good church. I get letters from people all the time that, you know, Pastor Brock, uh, should I leave my church if, if they're paying for abortions with offering dollars, which some mm -hmm. of those denominations are? And I said, yes, mm -hmm. but I've been there 50 years. Put God first. That's right. Yeah. Even though it may be a little difficult. Oh, I know, but you got to do Go it. to a different church. I'm so, Mona, I'm so glad I led our church that you went to for many years, mm -hmm. uh, that I served for 29. I'm so glad I led them out of the ELCA. Mm -hmm. And just recently, I, I was talking to someone whose brother is still an ELCA pastor and a conservative. I said, well, he, is he gonna leave him, lead him out? Mm -hmm. Because I've seen this happen. The old conservative pastor retires. They put in a new guy, and within a few years, they're, mm -hmm. they're promoting the stuff they should not promote. So. Get out. And doesn't it say brush the dust off your feet and yeah, travel you, on? You bet. And we yeah. got a time to do this. Years ago, 
I went to the ELCA convention when I was still an ELCA pastor. This is when I discovered they were paying for abortions for any reason mm -hmm. with offering dollars in the ELCA church health program. So if your pastor's 16-year-old daughter wants an abortion, they'll pay for it and that comes out of offering dollars. Mm -hmm. We went to the national convention and said, what? We lost two to one. And I did something I have ne had never done in my life. I left the auditorium and shook the dust off my mm -hmm. feet, like Jesus says to do mm -hmm. in, in, in the Gospels. And then I came back home and uh, eventually we got out of the ELCA. So Sometimes you have to do what's necessary. That's right, even if it hurts and even, I mean, I've got a lot of friends that were in that church. Mm -hmm. so, so what? We're here to follow Jesus, mm -hmm. not to please people. That's right, please yeah. God rather than men. That's right. Well, I'm out of questions. Oh. Do you have one yeah, or two that you we, want to talk about? We've had a few about? come in here. Um, here's the question. Uh, are the Pharisees still here today in the form of corrupt bankers, politicians, fake news, etc.? Well, when it, the Pharisees were the Old Testament experts. They were the religious leaders. So I, I would say a modern-day Pharisee wouldn't be a bad banker. He'd be a bad religious leader, like mm -hmm. we just mentioned. Um, and the, uh, you know, it talks about the Pharisees and the lawyers in the New The lawyers are not like our kind of lawyers. They were ex experts in the Old Testament law, the Torah. So that's who the, the Pharisees were experts in the Old Testament law. So a modern day, a modern day equivalent of a Pharisee would be someone who's a religious leader and maybe is overly legalistic, mm -hmm. like they could be, or, 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 may, or maybe like the Sadducees who were overly liberal, like these other places are. So put them all together, there they are. Yep. Mm -hmm. Well, listen, we've got about a minute and a half. Maybe if I could give everybody an update. Sure. Uh, everybody, we just want to thank you so much. We had a person uh, die and he left us a large amount in his will. So now we are adding stations around the country. And that's what we do. Uh, mm -hmm. We're a shoestring operation. Everybody in this ministry is a volunteer but me. I get paid a modest salary. I've got a board over me that makes sure I don't spend it on a Cadillac or a jet. And I and it just it's a we do this because we love the Lord. Yes. And just you pray for us if you would that God will bring in the more we get, the more we get almost all the money goes to buy airtime. So if the Lord would nudge you to support this, you'll see our our address in a minute. And if you want to watch the show again, all of our shows, most mm -hmm. of them are at our website, pastorstudy.org. So you can see that there. But listen, I just hope you have a great, is it, was this the Thanksgiving show? I think it was, or wasn't it? Um, yes, it was. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we do shows in a row and I get lost. But anyway, hope you have a great Thanksgiving. Put God right in the middle of your Thanksgiving yes. celebrations and have somebody pray a real prayer. Go around the circle. Tell us one thing you praise God for. We praise him for what he did in the past. Christ has died. Mm -hmm. We praise him for what he's doing in the present. Christ is risen. We praise him what he's going to do when he comes and makes things right over these false churches at the second coming. Christ will come again. God bless you. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you for watching the Pastor Study. You can watch more of our programs at pastorstudy.org. We are on the air preaching the good news of Jesus Christ because of the generous support of you, our viewers. Would you consider supporting our ministry? You may do so at pastorstudy.org or write the Pastor Study, P.O. Box 41294, Minneapolis, Minnesota 55441. May the blessing of our one triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and forever.